Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Thank you for tuning in. Now I'm here. Like, welcome back to the Branch Chronicles. I want to do something, y'all, that I've not done in a super duper 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 I ain't do this in a super duper long time. What I wanted to do was a book review. So let's get into it. This is not a reaction video. I've literally been telling everybody and their mom about this book, which my friend has written. And she wrote that thing, you guys. I mean, she really wrote that thing well. She really wrote that thing well, and she's really preaching. And it is a topic that nobody likes to hear. It's the preaching that nobody wants to hear. It's the conversation none of us like to talk about as it relates to the subject of what? Waiting. Ooh. Ooh, I hear the bulls already. Ooh. Ooh. She has written a book called The Privilege of Waiting. And what a privilege it is if we change our perception and get our perspective right. And especially when you wait on God and wait with God. And how do I wait well? What am I supposed to be doing in the waiting room? How am I supposed to be biding my time? What does it actually look like? And all the things. She really gets into the nitty gritty. And let me tell you something. Real honestly, I have not even finished this book. I am halfway through the book, but when I tell you I have literally underlined and I've highlighted and I've written amen and stuff in the margins because this book speaks to all of us time and time again about this dreaded subject, which is waiting. Ugh. I know I can hear some people now saying, oh, I hate waiting. I can't stand it. Ugh, it gets under my skin. What is it? I know, y'all. I know, I know, I know, I know. But this is why she wrote the book. That's why she wrote the book and wrote it well she did. And it's not like a, a preachy type of deal. It's not like a, I'm gonna shove the Bible down your throat, but it's very much a myriad and a collaboration of life experiences, scriptures, stories, and everything in between. And it is so powerful, but it's written by none other than Ashley Yvonne. That's my friend. She is a speaker, a minister, a licensed clinical professional. And she does so much, y'all, and she is just she's just changing the world by storm. She even has a clothing line. Let me pause for the clothing line. Shawty got a clothing line, y'all. The 17-6 collection. And that is according to Acts chapter 17, verse 6, which I believe says something about the way that we are they that turn the world upside down. Y'all already see what type of energy Ashley is bringing. Let me actually look it up in the Bible, because... We be so quick to look up everything else in the Bible, but you're not quick to look up the word. Like, who's that? How many times do we stop and have Siri or Google, for that matter, for my Android folks? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, we don't ask nobody else. So it says here in the New King James Version, Acts 17, chapter verse 6, Lou. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. So that's the message of the brand, the 17 Sis Collection. It's for those of us that are turning the world upside down for the kingdom of God, trying to build up his kingdom and all of that. I'm not trying to get into it, into it, but it is really good, y'all. It's really good. It's really cool, everything that she stands for. But this book, y'all, this book, let me talk about this book. I had to get that out the way. Shawty really wrote a good book, and, 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 and I'm going to put it on the screen because, bloop, I'm going to put it on the screen, but I'm going to read you what the cover says. It says, the privilege of waiting, finding hope, strength, and... And look at somebody and say and renewal in God during the difficult moments of life. And I'm gonna flip it over on the back because you know we gotta read the back too. See what she's talking about. Waiting is a privilege. What? Say it again, Ashley. Waiting is a privilege for the people of the back, for the people on the balcony, for the people on the left side of the room that ain't paying no attention because they having an A and B conversation. Waiting is a privilege. And it says, more than likely, you have never thought about waiting as a privilege. I know I haven't. For most people, waiting is an inconvenience, a nuisance, and a common point of frustration. But why? The truth is, no one likes to wait, and for this reason, many miss the privilege of waiting. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You can no longer afford to overlook the beauty and blessing that comes with the time of anticipation and expectation. When you discover the purpose of waiting, you will discover that waiting is a privilege. Uh-oh a process, and a part of life. That's a word, y'all. That's a word. I, you, she could drop the mic right there. When I tell you the whole book is full with moments like those, waiting is a what? A privilege, a process, and a part of life. It's like, okay, this discovery will lead you to shift your perspective when it comes to delays 
and the postponements of life. Because how many people know that there is a season and a time for every activity beneath the heavens, but that don't mean that it's gonna make waiting any easier to know that. If anything else, it may make waiting more difficult and more challenging because you're like, Lord, when is it gonna happen for me? When is it gonna happen for me, God, for me, for me? It's not my mother, it's not my brother, not my sister, not my cousin, not my friend. It's me, Lord, I need help. I need help trying to wait. I need help. Give me something to look at, give me something to do. And God will give you assignments. But you know, stewardship and all those things. But um, I'm not gonna read the rest of the back, just a little bit. I do wanna read an excerpt from it because it's so good, you guys, it's so good. Like right here, for instance, page 51, A Place of Exploration is the name of the section. And it says right here at the very bottom, and I'll underline this because this was speaking to me. She said, elevation will always require discomfort and adjustment, but fix your gaze on what is ahead and you will reach your destination. The discomfort and the journey to the top will be worth it. So how does that relate to waiting? It is easy to become distracted by our fears and even by what is happening around us. But this is not a time to become sidetracked by the circumstances of life, nor is it a time to live in fear. I have spent a large portion of my life living in fear. Hallelujah. That is me too, Ashley. Me too. Fear of the future, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown. Looking back on the years I spent living in fear, I have concluded that I was never created to live in fear. Although there were times in my life in which my fears were valid. If I truly believe my right, my life, look at me, my wife, <laughs> my life rested in the hands of God, then I had no reason to fear. Uh oh, it's easy to say it, but it's hard to live it. Come on, somebody. This is a time to explore your gifts, talents, dreams, and purpose. This is the time to explore who you are in God. This is the time to come into the full revelation of who you are and what it is that you were placed on the earth to do. This is the place of exploration. Continuing to hope is not a passive act. It is trusting in God to be God and to move at his pace. What is there for you to discover and see in the midst of waiting? I gotta let that marinate with y'all. I wanna read it one more time. I wanna read that question one more time. I'm, I'm asking myself this question today. What is there for you to discover and see in the midst of waiting? Good God Almighty. If I look around, what am I gonna discover? What am I gonna find while I'm here in this waiting room that I didn't know was there before? Woo, pardon the cliche, but I truly believe beauty is in the eye of the beholder. When I was younger, I did not understand this statement, but as I have matured and experienced life, I like saying matured sometimes, I know it's matured or however you may see it, and experienced life, I have come to learn beauty is indeed in the eye of the beholder. But beauty is only seen in the eye of the beholder if, if, if they are willing and able to look beyond the surface and into the deeper parts where beauty, true beauty is often hidden. It's not on that surface level, y'all. It's deep in the crevice, deep in the weeds that the real beauty begins. From the bottom, from the bottom, way deep down, 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 way down. Deeper and deeper, deeper, deeper down in my mind. Are you willing to explore a little deeper in order to see the beauty and the blessing of waiting? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I believe if Mama Odie was here, she would say, you gotta dig a little deeper, Cherry. You gotta dig a little deeper. Find out who you are. You gotta dig a little deeper into your soul and discover what God has put inside of you because you have everything that you need, somebody. Oh my goodness. I wanna, I wanna read this part too from 2 Corinthians. I mean, it's so good, y'all. It's so good. 2 Corinthians 4 and 7. It says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. Hallelujah. We have magnificence tucked away inside of us. And the only way people will be able to see it or even for you to see it is you have to discover what's there. You gotta discover, you have to reveal it. <sighs> Y'all see, my soul is on fire. She just, just already, I'm on page 51 and it's just like, wow. Wow, Ashley, wow. 
Wow. I want to read one more thing, y'all. I'm gonna leave y'all alone. I promise you. I promise. I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm gonna leave you be. Cause I mean, it's just like Ashley. Get just in my business. In my business. So this is what I want to read to you guys. This is from page 24. I mean, literally from the very beginning, Ashley's in your face with the truth. So right here it says, gone are the days that we question whether or not the waiting is worth it. Oftentimes the motivation to quit and question the value and significance of waiting stems from misplaced hope in someone and something other than God. Yeah, 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 she said what she said. I said what I said. And she said it with her whole chest. Right, Ashley. When our expectation rests in someone or something other than God, we will inevitably experience disappointment and perhaps even feelings of defeat. Because how many people know that apart from God, man will fail you, huh? Man will fail you, we are imperfect, but God is perfect, oh, okay. So we cannot place our hope in something or someone that does not have the ability to do what can only be accomplished by God. They gonna fail every time, because only God can be God, not us. We're made in his image and his likeness. We're like our pops, but we are not our pops. I'm just saying to somebody. It says, if I am honest, I have found myself contemplating giving up in times when I had to hold on just a little while longer for something. Ooh, I was hoping would occur in the future. Hallelujah. I'm thinking about it, you guys. And I remember, all of us remember, you remember that, that point at the store where you were at the cusp of it? And you know, you hear it in church all the time. Like, I'm, just, I'm at the cusp of a breakthrough. If you're just holding on a little while longer, God's gonna deliver you. God's gonna see you through. God's gonna, and you're just like, Lord, I'm about to, about to take my hands off of it now. I'm about to let go and just fade. And, and it's right there where you hold on just a little bit longer. Boom, breakthrough. Hallelujah, boom. Your life changes, boom. God comes through for you in a way that you weren't expecting and you just start rejoicing. But back to Ashley. At some point in the waiting, I put my hope in someone or something other than God. And then this is the part that got me right here, you guys. It said a misplaced hope led to misplaced frustration and disappointment in God and with God. I'm gonna read it one more time. A misplaced hope led to misplaced frustration and disappointment in God and with God. Hallelujah. Because if your hope rests in someone or something other than, other than God, yep, or something other than God, I'm reading, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here a little bit because this is the way I'm speaking about it. If your hope rests in someone or something other than God, your hope is misplaced. Woo! Your hope is misplaced. And what do we know about faith? Come on, somebody. I don't know what's happening. I'm just, usually actually to put the fire in my belly. I'm not even trying to preach this thing. I'm just trying to read this thing to you guys. It's just a book review. That's all it is. But it's just, it's just so good. My spirit is because that is so real, y'all. It's so real. How many times do we get disheartened because we've misplaced our hope and our faith in things besides God? And we know this from Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Like, that's your faith. Your hope informs and feeds your faith. So if you stop hoping, and we know that hope deferred makes the heart sick, hello. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So if your hope is missing, your faith is weakened. And what's they, Satan trying to do? Steal your hope. It's not so much your faith, but if you stop hoping, if you stop believing that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all, you'll start to settle. And if you start settling, you're gonna find yourself in a situation where you're not experiencing the full abundant life that Jesus promised you on Calvary because you are just settling for safe instead of having risky faith because the scripture also says the just shall live by faith. Come on, somebody. I don't know why Ashley got me out here like a mad man going crazy, reciting the word of God and reading this. I'm, and I tell you, I just be reading this book and it fires me up, you guys. It fires me up. Let me get to the end of this so I can leave it alone. So she said, if your hope rests in someone or something other God, something other than God, your hope is misplaced. God gives value and significance to waiting. Ooh, you gotta let that sink in for a second. God gives value and significance to waiting. Waiting on God, in God, and with God. Woo, will always, hallelujah, always produce blessings that exceed expectation. I gotta read it one more time for myself. Waiting on God, in God, and with God. God 
will always produce blessings that exceed expectation. That's good news. 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 I hear Chandler saying that from one of those Mad City songs. But that's good news, you guys. That's good news. Whew, because in the end, God will get the glory out of your decision to sit tight and hang on to his promises. When you and I come to an acceptance of the knowledge that the ultimate goal of the wait is for God's glory, then we can trust that the wait will work out for good. Because that's the ultimate goal, is to give God glory and for God to get the glory. Sometimes we experience hardships and tribulations and circumstances, not just for our character development and not just for God to make us better or even to just benefit the body, but sometimes it's because his name is on the line. Sometimes it's about God's image. Sometimes it's about God's brand within the earth that God has to correct. Like how when the children of Israel were about to go through the Red Sea, and God had already forewarned them, according to Moses, that, yo, like, I'm about to harden Pharaoh's heart and I'm about to send him out there. He's going to pursue you. And he was trying to calm him and say, don't worry about it, because this is not going to be a result of anything other than I want them to know that I am the living God. Hallelujah. Sometimes God just has to prove himself to the people around you. Like, it doesn't even have to concern you directly. Hallelujah. Like, when Jesus came to Mary and, and, and Martha, when Lazarus had died, Woo! And he cried out after we know in Jesus wept. After Jesus wept, we, you know, or before, I can't remember specifically in this moment, but I do recall that Jesus wept and his prayer was that, Lord, let it be revealed to you that I am the resurrection so that you would get the glory out of the situation. And that's when God moved and that's when things started happening. So when I stop worrying, worrying about how the story ends, I let go and I let go. Let God have his way. That's when things started happening. I stopped looking right back then. Oh, I let go and I let go. Let God have his way. Let go. Let God. You ought to let go. And let God. Let go. And let God. Let God. Have his way. You ought to let go. Let go and let God have his way. All right? Let go and let God have his way. I just want to leave that with you. That's all I wanted to share. I haven't done a book review in so long, you guys. This book is life-changing. I'm only halfway through. I still got to read the rest of it. I actually signed my book, Praise God. I'm so grateful. It's this way you gotta have the right people in your circle because they are doing some fantastic and amazing things. As I always say, you guys, don't get bitter because what? Life does get better. I pray that you're encouraged. I pray that you are encouraged in the waiting. And I pray you get this book that it will continue to change your life and change your mind. Because you know that we're not supposed to be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the what? The renewing of my mind. What does that mean? Renewing. That means it's a continual process and God continues to change the way that I think. And as he continues to change the way that I think and the way that I perceive, then you know what that means, then that's gonna alter what I believe and how I process things. But it all starts from this frame of thinking. If I get this in my mind, I'll start to get it in my spirit. And if I get it in my spirit, then I'll start creating a system, hallelujah, out of habit that is founded on principles of faith. And what does that result in? That results in me changing, and that also results in people around me seeing God's greater strength at work in my life. And he still does what? Get the glory. So the way, the privilege of waiting, you guys, it is out, 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 it is out. Follow Ashley on YouTube. I'm gonna put it here, boom. Follow her channel on YouTube. She drops so many messages and sermons all throughout the course of the day and the week it is so good. She be preaching her behind off. I'm gonna put the clothing line description in the description below. 
but it is such a powerful thing and a powerful time of the Lord. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that you felt something that this resonated with you like I know it resonated with me. I made that baby wrote this book well. If you want, I might, I might be able to talk to Ashley. I might be able to get us to talk about this book. Would y'all be interested in seeing that or no? If not, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not, cause why, why I'm gonna make content if you're not gonna watch it? But if you wanna see, hear a little bit more about Ashley talking about this book with me, let me know, 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 cause we can get into it. But anywho, thank y'all, I'm out, goodbye, have a good day, have a great week, and be encouraged in your waiting season. It's not in vain, you're praying, you're fasting, you're working, you're stewarding, you're shepherding, you're leading, your um, work ethic, none of it's in vain. All right, because up the road is what? Is eternal gain. All right, I'm out.